Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you this morning, Lord, just thankful once again to be together in your house. Uh, we thank you for this opportunity to, to grow closer to you, uh, to learn about you, to just be made more like you, Lord. Uh, we pray that your spirit just comes down and touches each and every one of us this morning, moves through this building, and, and just has free will to work as you want to work, Lord. Uh, mold us and make us as you'll have us. Uh, use uh, your words to, to teach us, to lead us, and guide us. Um, we love you, Jesus. That's the most important thing, and we just can't say it enough. And we are ever so thankful uh, for everything you've done for us. And it's in your precious name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Um, a couple things this week. First of all, Wednesday I was here. Uh, and that was a great service. Normally I'm working. Uh, and when I ain't working, I blame working. But I should be here on Wednesday. That's all there is to it. It was a, it was a great service. And, and I really enjoyed it. And it lifted me up in the middle of the week. It was a... Uh, Something that I really need to strive to do better at. Uh, <laughs> Friday night, I think everybody was here. Uh, we had a, uh, a movie that, and uh, a lot of great fellowship, uh, eating together. I think uh, the more we do that, the better we'll be as a church, as a church family. Uh, you know, the one thing I remember about my mama's house is I'm always able to go in there and sit at her table and eat something. And it ain't got to be mealtime either. You know, she'll, <laughs> you go in there at her house and she'll say, well, I got this and I got this and I got this and I got this. Her pantry looks like the Dollar General. <laughs> she got it. <laughs> the power goes out for a couple of weeks. You can go to my mama's house. She's got plenty. Uh, but coming in and seeing that movie, uh, and I, I really enjoyed the movie, um, but it didn't hit me until the next day the message that I personally got, and I know everybody gets different messages from different parts and movies, um, but the message I particularly got was the fact that all the stuff that I've lived through in my life, all those car wrecks and fights, <coughs> I, I've jumped out of airplanes, and I did crack my back. Now see, the old demon thought he had me that time. He had that thing out. Mm -hmm. and he was coming down, and the old boy hit him right before he got to me. He said, well, you're going to crack his back, but that's it. You're going to kill him. And all the other things that, that I went through, and the thing that hit me the hardest was that I took credit for. Well, that was me doing all that. So that was me cracking my back and getting up and finishing making them next three jumps because I wanted to. That was me doing that. And that wasn't me. That was somebody else. That was, that was me just being tough, rolling around in cars and getting out laughing about it. Like ain't nothing happened. Well, tore up another one. But I'm gonna wonder what I'm going to drive next. Wonder which one I'm going to tear up next. I'm tough. I'm tough in them old cars. Look at how many I'm stacking up over there. I'm still here. I ain't been to the hospital yet in the car wreck. That was me. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. It was them angels all around me because God had a plan. He said, one day, you might not know it, Max, but you're going to go to church. I want you to go to church. And you're going to be around to do it no matter where you go and no matter where you stick your nose and no matter all the bad things you do, you're going to be there to see it. Now, it might be a hard, bumpy ride for you, son. But you're going to get there. And he got me there. That wasn't me. But I was taking all the credit. Boy, look how big and bad I am. All, right, all I got to do now is look in the mirror. I ain't so big no more. And I ain't so bad no more either. Same person standing here. But God had to knock 50 pounds off me just to show me that. Man, you ain't half as tough as you think you are. There went all that muscle. I feel better now than I did when I had it. What do I need all that for? 
I plan on going out here getting in a bunch of fights and raising no cane, and I don't want to outwork them 18, 20 year old boys. That ain't my, <laughs> I don't want to outrun none of them. What I need all that for? God did me a favor. He opened my eyes, just like that movie did. Just like that movie did. I was wondering, why didn't I die? Why didn't I die? All the other people that did what I did, they're gone. Most of them. But now I know. That ain't Gabriel. Oh, I killed mine. I killed it. After I see Jesus, I got to run and go hug his neck. For about a billion years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but what a great job that would be. I was in the service. You was in the service. You was in the service. How about being in the service of God? Mm -hmm. And having that kind of strength and that kind of power and that kind of wisdom and God saying, all right, mm -hmm. watch over that one right there. And you already know all the bad that's coming. You, you know what them that, that angel didn't get scared when them old mean-looking demons showed up. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, that one that had the cracks in his head where you could mm -hmm. see the fire, and he had that old whip mm -hmm. made out of fire. Oh, that scared most folks. <laughs> 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 I wasn't on a mess with him. I used to say I wasn't scared of nobody. If I bumped into that fellow <laughs> right there, I'd have to change that <laughs> statement. Oh, I whip, but I don't want none of that. That thing's made out of fire, man. But that angel wasn't scared. Because he knew God would give him what he needed to whoop that old boy. If it come right down to it. Man, what a great job. God almighty, that would have been a great job. You know, you, you want to go back and change that. I used to think, well, being David would have been good. But no, David messed up. David messed up. Being Samson would have been good. No, Samson messed up all the time. Uh, being Joshua, then that'd be good. Joshua didn't mess up. Joshua did good. But being an angel, being Gabriel, never messing up. Never messing up. Always being on point. Man, that would be nice. Anytime God got a job, he needs done. Max, come in. And him know you're going to get it done. And that would be nice. Uh, him I would want to trade with. Uh, all right, we left off in Luke chapter 17 and verse 20. And, and we're still in, uh, this is mostly the next, let's see, chapter or so. Is uh, chapter 17, verse 20. Yeah, the next three or four chapters is going to be the teachings and the words of Jesus. Just about all these words are going to be read in my Bible. And uh, the, all the words in the Bible are important, but the red ones, man, you better watch. That's God's, okay? That's coming out of Jesus' mouth. Uh, verse 20. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. That's a hard verse. The kingdom of God is within me. The kingdom of God is within each and every one of us. It's in your soul. It's in your eternal soul. God get, they didn't just make you a living body and give you an eternal soul. The kingdom of God is whether you decide to believe or not. You want to believe there's a kingdom of God? And that Jesus is the king of it? Come on in. He's got something waiting on you. If you don't want to believe, go ahead and live your life. God will let you. As a Christian, I have a hard time just wanting to let people do what they want to do. As an unsaved man, I used to say, I let everybody do what they want to do. I don't care what you do. As long as you don't bother me, do whatever you want to do. Now, I hate to see people doing things that go against this just because I know it's hurting them. It ain't hurting me. You don't believe in this, it hurts you. It don't hurt me. 
I'm go I'm going to the kingdom of God. I got the kingdom of God inside of me. Part of me is already in heaven. I've read my Bible enough to know that Jesus dwells in me and I dwell in him. And where is he sitting? On the right hand of God. Right now. Peace of my soul is already there. <coughs> I heard the other day you need three things out of your Christianity. Or you just you, you're missing the boat. You need to be safe. That's number one. You need to be secure in it. And then you need to be satisfied with it. You need to be happy about it, where you are and what you got. If you want to be saved, you trust in Jesus and you believe it. You believe in Jesus Christ and be saved. You get saved and believe you're saved. If you want to be uh, uh, satisfied, now what? Secure. You got safe, then secure. If you want to be secure, you get in this word, and when you read this word enough times, you know God Almighty made you in His image, and He loves you. And he wants you to be in heaven with Him forever. He loves you so much, He sent His only Son down here to die for you. Lord have mercy. I can't imagine. All right. So you get in here, and then you read this, and then you're secure. And then you start doing the works, because you want to. Not because you're getting into heaven. You're getting into heaven. You're already safe. You get in this book, you'll be secure. He loves me. It says right here, he loves me. It says right here, he loves me. It says, his mercy endureth forever. That applies to me. Because I've been in the book. And then you're satisfied when you start doing the works. Hey, God's looking down at you and he's going, well, he could be he could be fishing. And he could be hunting. And he could be working. He likes making money. It don't do him no good, but he likes making it. And he could be teaching Sunday school this morning. Well, he's teaching Sunday school. How about that? How about that? I bet I get a blessing out of that. Ain't even asked for one. I'm, I'm just thankful I'm here. I'm proud to be here. That's the blessing. Because <laughs> the kingdom of God is within me. I already got the blessing. It's on the inside. It's like joy. When you have true joy, when you have true joy in Jesus, it's on the inside. That's why they can put you in prison and it don't go away. That's why they can beat you with the whip. It ain't going to go away. You might, yeah, it's going to hurt, just like it would an unsaved man. But that joy ain't going to go away. Well, I know what the book said. You persecute me because I love him. Man, you are putting me in the front row like you. Go ahead and hit, again, hit me again. <coughs> This is just going to hurt for a little while. You're moving me to the front row every time you hit me. Go ahead and hit me again. Hit me. Do you still love Jesus? Yeah. Hit me again. I'm going to keep saying yeah until I can't say it no more. Because I know the kingdom of heaven is inside of me. The kingdom of God is in here. He gives each and every one of us the key. Believe in me, or believe whatever you want to. The Hindus have, I think, 20 million gods. Go pick one. And run with it, man. How weak are you if you got to have 20 million of them? One of mine does the job. One of mine handles everything. <coughs> I ain't got to go. I can't even remember 20 million. I won't live long enough to, to, to learn 20 million. That's ridiculous. The kingdom of God is inside of me, just like it's inside everybody else. And whether you know that or not, sadly in our country, most people don't know that because they hadn't read this book and they ain't going to read this book and they don't want to hear this book. That's, how, that's the way it is. What, the only thing that can save them, the words in this book. They're going to say, oh, we don't want that. Jesus saves, t-shirt, you got to go. You got to go. No, you got to go. God picks the right people to put 
I'm glad he didn't put me in that situation. I'll show it out. No, you take it off. I got a gun back of mine now. You're talking about a constitutional right, a federally granted, God-given right to believe what I want to believe. You take it off. I'd rather die. I'd probably shot him. And he's just doing his job. God puts the right people in the right place. He's not going to put me in a place where I would do something like that. He's not. He's going to put me in a place where I'm going to say the right thing. And I'm going to do the right thing. Just like he did that guy. That guy was a preacher, by the way. He wasn't just some old somebody. He was a preacher. He knew what to say. He was ready for it. Uh, he, he said he'd rather die than take that shirt off. He said he'd rather go to jail than take that shirt off. Or cover it up. So he did the right thing. Um, verse 22. And he said unto, unto the disciples, The days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. Uh, that's been all the days of my life. Unfortunately, all my life I didn't desire to see him. But the last 11 years I have desired strongly to see him. And he ain't here no more. He left. 23. And they shall say to you, See here or see there, go not after them nor follow them. For as the lightning, that lightning out of the one part of the under heaven shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. He's got a day. All right. The last day he lived on this earth, he got crucified. He had a whip, beat, and my God, I don't even want to go through all of it right now. That wasn't his day. Next verse says, But first, he must suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. That meant his day wasn't going to be in this generation. He said he had a day, and then in the very next verse he says, not in this generation. I'm going to be rejected. And I'm going to suffer many things in this generation. All right, what are we going to do in our lifetimes? We're going to be rejected sometimes, especially if you follow Jesus. Uh, I had never had nobody do me like that. I never have. If anybody's around me and they don't like what I believe, they keep it to themselves. And they ain't got to. I'll listen to them. I'll debate with them. I'll, I'll, you tell me your way, brother. Is your way better than mine? If you got a better way, I want to know it. Share it. I'll sure share mine. I don't think your way can beat mine. But uh, I, I don't ever get that. I've never got that in my life. In Georgia, I wouldn't expect nobody got that. If you got that, you let somebody know and we'll make sure you don't get that no more. Because that ain't right. Uh, the Christians don't do nobody else like that around here. Why are we going to let anybody do us like that? That's just common decency. I'm not going to let you go down there and beat on the Jews and make it at their synagogue. No more than I'm going to let you come up here and beat on this church or the Methodist church or the Presbyterian church or that big old purdy St. Paul's downtown, that Catholic church. Don't go down there messing with that church. I don't care what you think about that church. That's a house of God, man. That steeple points up, don't it? There's a bunch of steeples on it pointing up. There's a bunch of crosses on that building, too. A bunch of them people that go to that church are saved in spite of that church. And that church is teaching. A bunch of those people that are Catholics go to that church and they think the King James Bible is the Catholic Bible. <laughs> no. No. They're different. They're different. But those people don't know that. They thought Billy Graham was preaching Catholic doctrine. No. He's preaching the gospel. 
He's not preaching you got to be a Catholic. He's preaching you got to be a believer in Jesus Christ and the shed blood of Jesus Christ. If you don't believe in that, brother, I can't help you. Nothing else can either. Nothing else can either. Uh, but he knew he was going to be rejected, and he knew he was going to suffer. Now, we know bad things are going to happen to us, not in detail. How would you like to know the next really horrible thing that was going to happen to you and know every detail of it years before it happened? So you get to dread it. I would dread mine. I think he knew that that's what he was there for, and he, he walked right on up to it like he was doing his job. And he knew that he was going to get them nails. He, and he didn't run. I don't think there's a man alive that's ever lived. If he would have known that that was going to happen to him, wouldn't have slipped out the back door. No, I got somewhere else I got to be tomorrow. I ain't gonna let them do me like that. I got to go. Max would have. <laughs> He'd been sitting there next to that back door and, and nobody looking. And I know, man, they're gonna nail me to them boards tomorrow. But Max, if you do that, everybody's gonna die. I ain't gonna get nailed to them boards. There ain't too many men that would might say that. Oh yeah, you can do me, you can do me. Yeah, and if it just come right down to it, and they got you, yeah. But they have to catch you. <laughs> but so there ain't no choice. And then you say, well, yeah, okay, I'll do it. You ain't got no choice anyhow. But he did it. I mean, he, he willingly went into all he is, knowingly. Uh, verse 26. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day, there's that day again, that Noah entered, the ark, in, entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Now that happened on the day, until the day come. They were all happy. Just like everybody was that wasn't here Friday night watching the movie. Everybody's out doing what they want to do. They was happy. All right. They're going to be happy when he comes back. To the... Uh-oh. And I tell you, I tell you what, I thought about this. The, the people that, that are unsaved that have passed, they're already burning in hell. So judgment, it's just a, it's just a, a, a formality. It's just a formality. They're already, they're already there. They're down there with the rich man that Jesus told us about. They're already there. So judgment's just coming up, and somebody's saying. Yep, it's final. We put you in the right spot, buddy. We double check. Your name's not in the book. Back down you go. But how about the ones that are here that day? The ones that have to go through the tribulation, I really feel sorry for them. They're going to do some suffering. And they're going to see some death like we had not never seen on this planet. There's going to be billions of dead people. We can't even, I can't imagine more than all the wars that man has ever fought will die in that one day. Bam! Now that's a day right there. I'm glad I'm going to be behind him instead of in front of him. I'm glad I'm, I'm going to be on his team, brother. We're going to be the ones winning 777 to nothing. And I'm glad I'm going to be on his team. Uh... And I, I feel sorry for the other two. And, and I don't know how the devil does it. I guess he, he just likes being the underdog, you know. And I've always liked pulling for the underdog, man, if, if I can. Yeah, I want to see that little one knock that big one off. I sure do. Especially if that big one ain't mine, you know, as long as that, and it ain't me, 
Yeah, I want to see the little one win. Let the little guy win. When Mercer won that thing in the in the basketball, that first round in that tournament, beat Duke. They beat him in the first or the second. I don't know, his first or second one. And, and man, that, that shocked the basketball world right there. That, that made me so happy. And I, and I wasn't even that big a Mercer fan. I was just glad to see Duke get bumped off. Bang, first round. How'd you get it? Uh, but he said, when that day came, the last part of that verse, it said, and destroyed them all. Uh, next verse, likewise, also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. They did what people do. That's what we do. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom and it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. You don't think God can wipe us out in one day? Yes, he can. There's one thing coming in the tribulation that I kind of am curious about I'd like to see. There's going to be a day that's not light and it's not dark. It's going to be dusk all day. So I would warn people, if you miss the rapture, look for that day. Look for that day because it's about to get rougher than it's already been. But it's going to come a day where it don't get light and it ain't dark. I've seen a few cloudy days like that lately, where it would stay dark, heavy dark clouds all day. But you can still tell it's daytime. You can still tell it's daytime. But he got them all again in one day. And these next, these last verses, or these next seven verses, this is the rapture being <clears throat> described to you right here. This is it. If people don't believe in the rapture, tell them to come back and read this right here and explain it to you. There's no other explanation for this. Uh, verse 30. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. That day is coming. In that day, he keeps popping on that day, just like the Old Testament. That dark day, the, the dread, dark, terrible day, the day of the Lord. That's the day he's talking about. He which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. She looked back. If you get saved and you backslide, come on back to church. Don't leave the Lord just because you messed up. If you think there's anybody in church that ain't messed up, then think again. Mess up, come back. Mess up again, come back. Mess up again, come back. But don't just go and stay messed up. Don't put down God because you picked up something you wasn't supposed to pick up. He's already paid for that. He's already paid for that. Don't put him down and don't look the other way. Yeah, you failed. Guess what? He, this is full of it. He told you he was going to fall, man. You think you're just going to run up the ladder to heaven? Never miss a beat. Never miss a step. Well, I'm going to be just like Jesus from now until the day I go see him. Well, I pray you are. I pray you are. Good luck with that. But when you fail, come back to church. Read your Bible. Pray. Ask the Lord to forgive you. Move on. How many times do you make your mom and daddy mad when you're growing up? And they spank your behind. It happened to me. My mama got me, and my, my, my little bitty mama will wear me out, boy, when I was young. I mean, she'd tear you up. And my daddy, when he got on you, you knew somebody got on you. And we had teachers in school, when they got on you, boy, they had some old, some old wooden <laughs> paddles, and then they moved to fiberglass, and then they started drilling holes in them. Make them more aerodynamic. Hey, I tell you what, the tougher our backsides got, the tougher they got, or the stronger they got, because they had something for you, boy. You sitting there trying not to let that water come out of them eyes, but uh, you lit up. Uh, but but remember Lot's wife. 
all she had to do was follow a light out of there, follow them angels out of there. And she would have been fine. Instead, turned into a pillar of salt. I bet that thing's still over there somewhere they just ain't found it yet. This is over there buried somewhere covered up in that sand, I guarantee. God will reveal it to us if they don't find it before he comes back. But it's over there. I guarantee it's still there. Uh, verse 33. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, thither will the, the eagles be gathered. All right, there's a couple things in that. Up in uh, uh, 33, it says, Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. All right, this is the, the rapture. This is not the end of the tribulation. He's coming back to Jerusalem to Armageddon with his armies to fight the Satan and his armies. This is the rapture. Alright, so that's the beginning of the end. This is when he calls his bride, that's what he calls his church, that's what he calls his followers. This is when he, he comes and gets her. And I told y'all how that Galilean wedding worked. Once his daddy said, all right, you built the room, you got a place to keep her, you saved up some money, you got a good job, you got transportation, you got a means to take care of this woman. And the daddy was adding all that up, not the boy. The boy couldn't just go marry that woman. He had to wait on the daddy to say, all right, now you've got everything in order, I think you're mature enough, I think you're man enough, now you can have your bride. Go fetch her. And that's what he did. As soon as his daddy said, go. That's why Jesus just said, I don't even know when I'm coming. Only God the Father knows. He was referring to the way they did their wedding. I don't know. Don't ask me. God Almighty telling you. I don't know. You know what that tells me? That tells me if he didn't know I sure don't need to know. Why would it be important to me? If it ain't important to him, if he wanted to know, he would know. But, who shall save his life shall lose it, and who shall lose his life shall save it. Uh, that day, I got news for you, Christian. Your body's going to drop. You're going to leave that old raggedy thing here. It can't go. Flesh and bone cannot inherit the kingdom of God. He's got to stay. So they say I think we got 1.5, 2 billion Christians in the world maybe. If you add us all up, all the denominations and don't do no canceling out, I'll let God do all that. But add them all up, I think you got around a billion and a half, 2 billion. The body stays. That happened right now. When whoever was left come in this church, all of us would be laying here dead. Sounds like a bad thing. No, man, it's the best thing that ever happened to you. You're in heaven with Jesus Christ. The only thing left is this old raggedy shell, this best. That's all that's left. People that's left are going to have to deal with that. I don't, I don't know what you do. There'll be mass graves everywhere. They got to do something. Or disease will just be rampant. They got to do something. I'd hate to be, I'd hate to be in charge of that. When the rapture happens, I want to lose my life. And if you saved, you can't save your life if you want to. If you saved and you believe in Jesus Christ, you can't stay down here after the rapture, not even if you want to. You gone, brother. You out of here. Just like me.
And just like everybody else that believes. I've told y'all a million times, I hope I'm up there cutting grass. Because they go first. They go first. And then we go with them. So we get to meet all our relatives that went before us before we go see God. God knows how much we love our family. And He's going to let us meet up with them before we come to Him. tell me a plan. Anywhere in the world, any kind of religion, whatever they believe is better than that. That makes me feel good all over. I got kinfolk that I never knew. But I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to know all y'all's kinfolk. I ain't going to know all of them just like I ain't going to know all of mine. Because all of them ain't going to make it. All of them didn't make it. I'm going to know a lot of them. I'm going to know a lot of them. I'm going to know a lot of yours. Uh, it says there will be two men in one bed. One shall be taken. you got to watch the, the people that are proponents of homosexuality. They'll point to this verse. That's ridiculous. That's insanity. Uh, you ever watch Three Studios? Hey, back in the day, a bunch of people shared a bed. Poor people still sharing beds now. You think two grown men won't lay in a bed? Let that be. Let them get a room and they're construction workers and there's one king size bed in that room. I promise you, both of them are sleeping on it. It ain't gonna be no, nah, brother. You take the bed and I take the couch. Or I'll just sleep over here in the recliner and be like, no, nah, you move over there and don't be messing my cover. I guarantee. Uh, two women grinding. They're at the mill. Grinding mill. Two men working in the field. One taken, one gone. And then they ask him, Where, Lord? Where they took? I wish you would come in with that John, uh, I don't know if it's chapter, chapter 10, chapter 14, where he says, uh, I go there and prepare a place for you. I wish you would say it was in my father's house, in my mansions right there. That's where I'm taking the ones I'm taking. But then the rest of it is pertaining to the ones, uh, the, the body. It says the body. Look at the end of verse 37. Wheresoever the body is, there the will the eagles be gathered together. And an eagle in the Bible is basically a scavenger. You know, an eagle is a scavenger. That one step up from a bush. They'll eat something dead just as fast as they'll catch something. I don't care. They're not a particularly noble bird. <laughs> like we make them out to be. I think they're extra aggressive, but other than that. Uh, but to me, that's a day that a lot of Christians just don't, don't look, they don't, I don't know whether they don't believe it, or they don't understand it, or I, because I, I, if you believe it, and you understand it. I can't understand why you ain't just... Yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. All my troubles are over that day right there. I'm done. I got to go to the judgment seat of Christ, but guess what? I'm going in front of a judge like I ain't never did in my whole life. I've stood in front of a bunch of judges. That's a bad feeling, man. Especially when you know you're wrong. All right, I'm going to be standing in front of him knowing I'm wrong. I'm going to be knowing he made it right. The judge made it right. The judge fixed it to where I'm going to be okay in this case. I'm going to be okay. He's got me. I ain't never had a judge love me before. I ain't never had a judge willing to die for me before. I'm going to have one that day. How about that? And I'm going to have the devil standing on the other side. He's going to be saying, Lord, I got you on this one. You can't let this one in. Not this one. We're going to be here a minute, Lord. Get comfortable. Spend a lot of time with this one. I got books and books wrote on this one, Lord. You can't let this man in the house. 
He's as filthy as anything that ever stood up here before you. What is he even doing at this judgment? I don't understand why I'm here, Lord. We need to be dealing with him at the White Throne. And he's going to say, how you played, Max? Played the blood of Jesus Christ, Lord. Have mercy on me, a sinner. Have mercy on me, a sinner. I'm counting on what you did, Calvary, Lord. If that don't pay my tab, I guess I got to go with him. And I tell you what, I love Jesus so much, and I believe in him so much, and I believe he's, his way is right. And I, and I was telling my family this morning how many times I have been wrong in my life. My God. The, a lot. To where I'm doubting everything I do. I'm doubting everything I do. I don't doubt this. But everything else, every other thought I have now, i got to stop. And say, wait a minute. You thought you was right about this, and you thought you was right about that, and you thought you was right about this, and you thought you was right about that, and you was wrong about all those things. You might be wrong about this too. Uh, I can't tell you, you know. I, I know we come up a week or so ago. I told y'all we brought I brought old stray dog home. Uh, precious. The lessons God has taught me through that dog. Um, the best one, she, she, I don't know what her background is, but she, she hates a pen. I, I have never seen a dog climb like this dog. I ain't seen a dog tear up like this dog. Um, I ain't seen a dog ever think as long and as hard as this dog does. You put her in a pen, she won't eat, she won't drink. She has some corner to corner. Come back down, walk the ground. It's like she's drawing a blueprint of it in her mind. So four or five days there, I fought it. And every night I come home and work on it, try to do something else to it, and put her back in there. She right back out. She can go in there and eat, come right back out. She spent more time in the house the last couple of days than she has anywhere else. Uh, and one day, boy, my temper was extra. It was Tuesday, I think. It was Monday or Tuesday night. It was raining. Uh, mist and rain. I come home. It done got dark. I was trying to figure out how to keep her in there. And I was just mad as fire. I'd been thinking about it all day. I said, I've never had nothing I couldn't. And I was about to the point, it come to my mind, I said, I'm going to get a chain, and I'm going to put it on her, and I'm about to break her spirit. Now that's a nasty talk. You talk about breaking somebody's spirit. Even an animal. You know, make you feel about that high. And that's what I was going to do. I was mad, I was hot, and I was like, I am not going to have this animal telling me where she's going to stay. She's going to stay where I put her. She's going to be there when I come back. And if it takes a logging chain and ten of those concrete blocks wrapped around her neck, that's what she's about to get. I mean, I was mad. And I had the chain and the blocks at the house, brother. And I wasn't going to put no collar on her. I was going to lock it on. I pull your head through that. You'll cut it, slap off. Go ahead. You want to be nasty? I'll be nasty. And I thought like that all day long. And I was mad, buddy. I was prepared to... Mm. And on the way home that afternoon... So help me, the Lord put this thought in my head. He said, Max, he said, if I locked you in jail, what would you do? So if I put you in jail the rest of your life, what would you do? And honest to God, I'd be sitting there thinking how I'd get out. 
Life in jail? Well, at least I got something to think about. I'm going to know every one of you guards like I know the back of my hand. I'm going to know your bad habits. I'm going to know your good habits. I'm going to know when you're working better than you do. I'm going to know this prison system better than you do. I'm going to be here 24 hours a day. I'm going to watch everything. I'm going to hear everything. I'm going to talk to everybody. I'm going to take advantage of every little crack you got. And one day I'm going to ease away from you. At least I got something to think about. Odds are against me. It's like playing the lottery. No, brother, you ain't going nowhere. You're in prison. We got you now. Game over. Pretty much. But people get out. People get loose. All I got to do is be nice to them. Maybe they'll make me a trustee. I see, I can be nice to them for a couple of years. Max, we need you to run to the store. We trust you. Yes, sir. Uh, let me see the keys, boss man. I'll be right back. I'm out of there. Maybe not for long, <coughs> but I'd be just like that dog. There would be one difference. That dog is just like me. Don't put me in no cage like that. You're going to make me worse. Whoever did it is really going to make me, you're going to make me hate you. Quick. I ain't supposed to hate nobody. But you locked me in a cage here. So now I got a dog and I'm thinking, what I'm doing to that dog, that dog ought to hate my guts. Why, why would she listen to me? And God, the next thing it really got me. He said, he said, uh, how would you like me to punish you like you're going to punish that dog? I can get you a lot worse and putting a chain and some blocks on your neck. I ain't got to do that. I can stop you in your tracks right now and let you live for another 40 years, brother, on your back. You want to break the spirit? I never broke your spirit. When you were romping and cutting loose and not doing what your mom and daddy said, not doing what everybody else said, not going to church, not believing in me, I didn't ever break your spirit, but I could. I could have crippled you at the age of 22, boy. All one of them surgeons had to do was sneeze when they were in there tampering with your back. And man, you did. Now I done moved the dog in the house. I ain't the same man I used to be. <laughs> God has changed me inside out. Something ain't, I mean, I'm upside down compared to the way I used to be. I would have shot that dog 20 years ago. You going to get out of the pen? One more time. God, get it. I'm done with you. I ain't got no money for you. But thank God, if I wasn't reading the Bible, and I wasn't coming to church, and I wasn't praying, God wouldn't have talked to me this week. That old dog's ought to be dead. And I'm liable to have shot that dog in front of my youngins and made a fool out of myself and scared the fire out of them and set the worst example I could have possibly set if it wasn't for this and, and, and coming to this church and the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, the kingdom of heaven is within you, like we said when we started. It's in there. You just got to let it do what it wants to do. Go along with it. Don't fight it. And we'll close with that. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we can't thank you enough, Lord, for your word. Uh, for all the many wonderful teachings that we get from it. Uh, I apologize personally, Lord, for all the many lessons that we left uh, in there that we, we, we don't get around to enough, Lord. We don't see enough. We don't read them enough. Uh, I just pray that you give us the ones that we need when we need them. Uh, we love you, and we just pray your spirit continues to move through this building this morning. And it's in your precious name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.